Hi everyone and uh, welcome to another Greeny Flix Adventure 8 YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at the Alucab Canopy Camper and my next top 5 mods. I've already covered my first 5 mods that I did on the Alucab Canopy Camper is there somewhere in the link and now I'm going to be looking at the next five that I've done there's no particular order of these mods what's best or what's worst but it's uh, you know what's relevant for me and some of these ideas might be also relevant for you if you're considering the Alucab canopy camper yeah so it's a rainy day uh, here in Sydney and that's probably a, a good day to actually talk about mods and whether they work or not so let's have a look at the first mod now in a cold condition particularly when traveling in central australia the evenings can get really cold so to have somewhere warm where you can reside if you can't have a campfire for example uh, that is really important so one of the first mods that i did is here um, the the canopy camper as you know is black and uh, so at night time it loses heat very quickly uh, in summer time when the sun is on it it actually heats up very quickly as well so this entire canopy can get quite hot so if you've got running a fridge in here well then that affects the ambient temperature and the cooling as well i put on this felt here you can see it's nine millimeter felt it's fairly lightweight and easy to cut with a knife so you can get the right shape and just insert it into these gullies here so you've got a bit of a frame here for the door and you just insert it the felt will fit into these cavities if you cut it just right nevertheless when you're driving or if there's a lot of vibration that felt will fall out so you can glue it in if you want to or you can use double-sided tape of some kind um, but i'm not advocates of glue or double-sided tape if i can avoid it I try to use something a more positive fastening so what i did i just drew a, a hole there a hole just uh, on the inside edge there and then you can just run a cable tie through there and then that provides good insulation uh, both in heat and also in cooling when it's really cold and the other thing is if you go for a light felt like i have here it reflects the light really well and then it gives the whole place uh, a nice even light which is easy to see and do things. So uh, that's one. And I've just put an insert there, insert there. And you can put an insert on the ends as well, which I just uh, haven't got to at this stage. And it all fits in with the fly screen and the cover. And uh, my earlier mod that I was talking about, which was the plastic screen here, in addition to the, the privacy cover and the fly screen. So that's the first one let's go on to the next one okay the next mod is to do with the entry all right i'm inside right now so i'll let myself out Ooh, voila. Uh, what i noticed was that um, when i was hopping in in and out there is a door seal here right here edge here this seal runs all the way down and down the bottom as well as well as up the top here and what i noticed was that every time i was hopping in and out i was stopping, stepping on this edge here um, and very quickly wearing this rubber away there's uh, stainless steel underneath but nevertheless also potentially damaging this uh, seal here which the door sits against and stops dust and water from coming in what i built was um, just this aluminium edge Plus a bit of timber, plus a bit of aluminium. So just a right angle channel, piece of timber and a right angle channel. So this channel fits, screws into that timber. This right angle channel screws into the timber again and then sits nicely over the top. So as long as you get the right dimensions here, then this just sits on there. It doesn't impact the, the cushion seal here. So the door can sit, still sit against that. But every time you step on here, you're stepping on there and you're not damaging the seal. This channel here then has uh, some screws which screw into the 
frame here and that's part of actually holding the entire floor firm um, down so that then you can tie things down to the floor and things don't move around all right yes so rain always an issue my next mod is this here now normally when this door opens up uh, this is a rubber or plastic uh, edge here which is flexible and then will actually just rotate up with the door what I've noticed is there's a lot of stress on this plastic edge and it appears to be just siliconed in on both edges on the frame here and also on the door um, what I noticed was that because of the stress when you open it here that this plastic could separate from the silicon that it's attached to and then when this door is up water flows along the door underneath the edge water leaks on the canopy camper i'm still trying to work out why it's actually coming through there um not sure whether it's on top there somewhere ah okay so there's water coming in that way So what I've done is I've taken an aluminium strip um, with pop rivets. So I've pop riveted this aluminium strip to the door and then overlap the strip over this edge here which then holds that edge firm. In addition to that I've put that extra silicon everywhere so it basically sandwiches this plastic edge between the two pieces of aluminium. Now that will hold this edge firm against the door, sealed with silicon. It does then actually put extra stress on this one here, which isn't sandwiched, but just uses silicon to hold it in place. Whether I have to do something up there also, I'm not sure, we'll see with time. So by putting that aluminium strip there and the extra silicon, it's actually stopped all the water coming in through those seals and then coming in through the bowls. Well, that seems to be working. So that was number three, putting that extra strip of aluminium and silicon on the seals for these barn, well, I don't know, what do you call them? Doors that flip up on the side. Okay, back in my cozy environment inside the canopy camper, uh, let's have a look at mod number four. So I've got two electrical panels, rear passenger side and rear driver's side. On the rear passenger side I've got my red arc for the for 12 volt uh, auxiliary battery and uh, main system uh, with the connections for solar, main in and, and 12 volts out. And then on this side I've got the fuses for this back area for the canopy. Some extra outlets that I've put in. And now I've also got this 600 watt in pure sine wave inverter. Now this particular one, Ridge Rider, 240 volt outlets, and you've got some USB um, plugs as well, 2.4 amp. Uh, has an interesting feature, press the display button here. And uh, that shows the condition of the auxiliary battery. It's probably down to about 12.5 volts, I would say. This uh, wattage reading here uh, shows how much watts are going out through these power outlets or the USB. I've turned on the motor, so now we've got full charge coming through from the Red Arc DC to DC um, charger. Okay, let's uh, plug in the computer into the inverter and let's see how, what sort of power consumption there is. The Apple charger that I'm using here is saying that the output is maximum 20 volts, 4.25 amps. So that makes it about 85 watt charger. So that's showing that it's drawing um, around seven, 78 watts. Um, as soon as it starts to draw the power there, there's a little fan in here that actually comes on. 
I've turned the motor off now, so I'm only running off the battery that's not fully charged, and it's uh, giving me a warning sign. I'm presuming here that the voltage level again is dropping to a concerning level. And um, charging up my computer from the battery that's with the vehicle not running. Anyway, the point of all this exercise is that if you've got all the readings and then you can understand what's going on, you can make decisions of how you're going to charge, whether you're charging off the solar, whether you're charging off the uh, main battery or the auxiliary battery. It's good to have the information. All right, my fifth mod. Um, so I've got these uh, Anderson plugs, uh, which I can connect in, connect out. Uh, the good thing about this sort of arrangement is I can basically remove everything that's inside the canopy camper and disconnect it through these Anderson plugs. The other advantage is I can plug in these uh, meters uh, in between the Anderson plugs to find out what's going, going on. Here are the two units that I have. Um, I've just written battery on one side so I know where the input is and also load on the other side so I know where the output is. So de depending on how I connect up to those other Anderson plugs, I either connect up that way or that way, depending whether I'm measuring the battery or the load. There you go. So for example here, I've got, I'll give you the details of uh, this. It's called an atom power. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Uh, don't worry about it, Siri. Um, yes. If you say so. So um, this is measuring a number of things. So you've got amps. So this is coming from the solar panel right now. It's a rainy day, so we haven't got much energy coming in at all. 0.4 amps is coming in. Um, very low voltage is coming in at uh, around 9 volts and about uh, 3.7 watts. So just amps times voltage gives you the watts. Now that's coming from the solar panel. These are the readings I'm getting coming out of the Red Arc uh, DC to DC charger. Uh, so I'm getting around 6 amps coming out, around 13, 13.3 thereabouts volts coming out of there um, to the auxiliary battery and around 72 watts right now. So it's charging up the auxiliary battery and I'm running these lights around here as well as the fridge are the only loads currently. So that's my fifth modification is getting this little watt meter, volt meter, amp meter that I can just plug into series with the uh, Anderson plugs. Stopped raining, hippie. Uh, so they are my next top five mods for the Alley Cab Canopy Camper. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do subscribe, do like, really appreciate your comments and your support. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, cheers.